For this problem, we're given a piecewise defined function, but this piecewise defined function looks a little bit odd in that not only do we have the variable x involved, we've got a couple of other letters that are actually constants that we want to find. Uh, and those letters are a and b, but they're not variables, they're just constants we're looking for. Uh, and it may not be possible for us to uh, do this, but we want to, uh, to set this up in either say why it's not possible or set it up and actually solve. Uh, so what we have here is uh, the top function or the top piece is our 3x plus a. That is defined whenever x is less than 1. But 3x plus a is simply a line um, because remember that a is just a number. Uh, so it would be a, a line with slope 3 and the a would give our, um, our y-intercept. Uh, the other one looks slightly more uh, complicated in that uh, we have this fractional exponent here. So we have x to the b divided by 2. Uh, and that's defined wherever x is greater than or equal to 1. So um, we kind of have some options here. Uh, if b is a, a, an even um, integer, we would have just uh, x to the uh you know, some sort of number, some sort of integer, uh, because it would be div division by two there. But uh, we're certainly not restricted to that being our answer for B. But even if B were um, some sort of, uh, some sort of stranger number, even if it were just an odd integer, um, we would have this over two thing, which would be kind of like the square root. Um, and so when we're looking at uh, this X to the B over two, it's really the square root of X to the B. And so um, as long as x to the b is uh, greater than or equal to 0, um, we would be golden as far as being able to actually define what x to the b over 2 is. And I say all of this just to kind of assess our possibilities on continuity because uh, we're asked to... Um, to situate this function um, with a's and b's that would force this to be continuous and differentiable everywhere. And so the everywhere part um, requires us to think about the individual pieces. And the individual pieces, like we said, um, are going to be okay the, within the domain for which they're defined. Um, so then it's really just this x equals 1 place that we have to assess. And so that's what we're going to do. So we've got continuity. Uh, as our first thing that we want to deal with. So continuity, we're looking at the left and right limit, um, and really I should specify continuity at uh, x equals 1 because that's the only place it's not going, or it might not be continuous. Every other place is going to be continuous just by the nature of the definition. So continuity, we are looking at the left-hand limit as uh, x approaches uh, the 1, so x approaching 1 minus, uh, of the function f of x. So that would be the left-hand limit where we are choosing x to be slightly less than 1, so that would be that top um, piece, so 3x plus a. So now remember, we are taking a limit of a line here. That a is just a constant. And so when we're taking this limit of the line, uh, we plug in still um, that, that 1 in place of x. And so what we would have is a 3 times a 1 plus a. So we're really looking at 3 plus a. Okay, so that would be the limit from the left. Uh, we want it to match the limit from the right, which would actually also be, we've got to look at the function value too, but certainly it's got to match the limit from the right if the limit's going to exist. So the limit from the right is going to be um, what happens when we plug it into the piece that's x to the b over 2. Well, we're talking about plugging 1 in here. So we're talking about 1 to the b over 2. So no matter what b is, 1 to anything is going to be simply 1. Okay. And now also, just um, for completeness here, notice that f of 1 is actually equal to what happens when you uh, plug the 1 into the the bottom piece because that's where the domain is the x greater than or equal to the 1. So that's what we'd get there if we had the um, 1 plugged in uh, to the b over 2 there, which is, again would be 1. Okay. 
So uh, we need these two, these three things to be equal. Two of them already are equal. They're both one. But we need all three of them to be equal if the function is going to be continuous at x equals 1. So that's what we get. We've got the 3 plus the a must be equal to 1. And if we subtract 3 from both sides, we're left with a must be equal to negative 2 to make that happen. So, so far we were able to find the constant a, and that constant a allows us to to conclude that we would have um, this function being continuous everywhere. So that remains um, that we need to assess differentiability and we also have B that we still have to um, handle. So that's what's going to happen next. So again here is our function um, and what I'm going to do first is uh, tell you that each individual piece we could take the derivative within uh, each piece uh, sorry, I didn't have that function written quite correctly. I need that um, or equal to part there on the bottom. But we can get the derivative of each piece by, um, or we can take the derivative of each piece, which would give us the um, separate pieces, but it doesn't tell us a single thing about the or equal to part. So we don't know what's happening at 1 for the derivative, but we can say what's happening um, to the left of 1 completely, it would be the derivative of the, the line 3x plus a. Well, the derivative of that line would be uh, the slope 3, um, because that would be the derivative of the term 3 times x. And then remember a is a constant. We actually know what it is. We've calculated it to be negative 2. But uh, regardless, uh, the derivative of the constant 0. Using the power rule for the bottom piece, we bring the power of b over 2 down, and then we have x to the uh, b over 2 minus 1 as the new exponent, okay, using the power rule there. And so uh, that's what the derivative would be for each one of the individual pieces. And we don't have any trouble with any of those places except possibly at x equals 1, that switch over in the domain. So differentiability. And again, we're looking at um, at x equals 1, okay? So what ends up happening is we can, uh, we know that to the left of 1, the derivative is 3. And we know to the right of 1, we kind of have a weird looking derivative. So what we need to figure out is what's happening as each one of those pieces is approaching that switchover place of 1. So what happens is we're looking at the limit from the left of the, um, the f prime piecewise function. And that derivative would be the limit or sorry, that limit would be the limit from the left of the constant 3, and that limit is 3. Um, the limit from the right of that derivative piecewise function would be the limit uh, from the right of that weirder looking one that involves b, the b over 2 times x to the b over 2 minus 1. Okay, now that looks like a lot to solve for, but remember we've got to take the limit first. And so the limit to the right um, as we're approaching 1 is really what we get when we just plug in 1. And we're plugging in 1 for x, remember. So we've got b over 2 times 1 to the b over 2 minus 1. So it's really nice that we're plugging in 1 there because um, no matter what the exponent b over 2 minus 1 is, since the base is 1, um, we have that that whole thing is 1. So we've got or sorry, the 1 to the weird exponent is simply 1. So that leaves us with uh, b over 2. So what needs to happen for us to have um, the function differentiable at that switchover place is when we come in from the left and when we come in from the right, it needs to they need to match. And so we've got um, the equation to solve that would be the 3 from coming in from the left on that line must equal the uh, b over 2 which is what we get from coming in to the right from that power function and so solving for b here means we need to multiply both sides by 2 so what we do when we do that we've got 3 times 2 is 6 and we are in fact able to solve for uh, the other constant uh, that's involved in this piecewise function and we get b is equal to 6.